بلان نات حزب الله يسجل س... You said, sorry, you said yourself that Lebanese people have the right to dream, and they do. They have the right to dream that they'll get their prisoners back from Israeli dungeons and to get their dignity. That's why Hezbollah did the action it did. Thank you. And the Lebanese. And the Lebanese have the right to know when they're going to go to war. And the Lebanese have the right to know that there are other options other than war. And the Lebanese have the right to know that it's one single state, legitimate state institution, is the one who decides when and how to get the prisoners back. And not one armed faction that presents maybe one third of the population that will do this and will incur this kind of de devastation. Why didn't you do it before? Sorry. What? If the army had done it before, if the Lebanese government had done anything before, or if any Arab government sorry, would have Hezbollah done anything the before, government. then you could no. accuse Hezbollah. But Hezbollah is but part of the government. But nobody has done anything. It's the only yeah. Arab force that stood up to resist Israeli occupation. It did the so only in 2000. Arab force okay, you've said that. For the release you of said that before. Mula, it, did so, it did so in 2000. It stood up to the Israelis brilliantly well. And this is All a wonderful right, and dignifying. So just said that it shouldn't have done it we didn't have to do it again six years later. Is this Lebanon's fate? It Periodic war every five to six years? It did it to prove that it can stand up to the, stand up to the Israelis? Osama, it did it according to the ministerial statement that the government gained the confidence of the parliament according to it? They didn't the do it. The ministerial statement adopted the principle, embraced resistance, but it did not give you a free card to secretively plan and take people off guard and do any military operation well, at you will. You have to go to the wording of the ministerial statement. Sayyid Nasrallah told Saad Hariri, and he all the other all the they officials. told them we are going to carry a, an operation to take Israeli captives in order to swap them with our uh, exactly. hostages. They know that. Exactly. Thank you. They have been told this they for Thank you. Let's take another question from the lady in the second row here, please. Uh, my question is for the panelist uh, for the motion. If uh, Hezbollah had no right to go on the war on behalf of Lebanon, who else then have the right? I mean, does Israelis have the right to go on a war on behalf of Israelis, for instance? Uh, the only justification to go to war is to expedite a political purpose. When, you, when, you, when uh, a political track comes to its end, then you go to war, provided you can get to your political purpose with this war. To enter a war to lose does not make sense. We're, we're not... Uh, this is not a question of legitimacy, which I see the, uh, both Mona and Ibrahim keep talking about, or maybe your question, that it's their right or, or, or so. And nobody is defending Israel's right to destroy a country or any other country. Uh, the question is, you enter a war to win, not to get your country destroyed. This is the core of the argument. The core of the argument that Hezbollah had no right to, to go into a fight. Yes. So it's a, a legitimacy question. That's why we're talking about well, it. Who has the right? It's a very simple. It's legitimate state institutions in Lebanon. These are the, the They are not doing their job, my right. dear. They, they haven't done their job in, in 30 years, in 50 years. Yeah, then that, you have I'm to sorry, defend yourself. They are the Let's from doing the job. You have to defend yourself either right. way. Let you're, Hisham Qasim come back no, on that, this, that, What you're saying is basically a serious breach of the, the idea of, of uh, nation states of government. The fact that three ministers in a government, or four, I'm not sure, uh, take the decision to take the country unilaterally into war, and then Mr. Hassan Nasrallah comes up saying, that they, the only reason they decided to handle it this way was because uh, minutes of the cabinet meeting leak out. Therefore, we decided to take the country into war is basically this is not what a happened. destruction this no. is a of the idea of the No, no, no. This no, no. is a, this... a distortion for the fact. This is not what happened in Lebanon, actually. Let's go to the lady on the uh, fifth row up there, please. You've been waiting patiently for a long time. If America is able to give weapons to Israel without anyone saying anything, why can't Syria and Iran give weapons to Hezbollah to fight back and defend themselves and Lebanon? Uh, they, they certainly can, you see. Nobody is questioning the legitimacy in that sense. Uh, but you say to defend Lebanon. No, they took weapons and ended up destroying Lebanon. What we have are volleys of Katyusha being uh, uh, fired into Israel that landed in parks in the sea, did minimal damage in comparison. So nobody's contesting that. Yes, if the United States gives Israel a weapon, uh, Iran can go ahead and give uh, Hezbollah. 
but oh. it's not to defend. Well, let's take a question from the lady up there, please. Good evening, everyone. Um, my question is for the four. You are talking as if Hezbollah attacked Tel Aviv right from the start. Hezbollah did something that it's always been used to do. It captured soldiers in an attempt for negotiation to release the, uh, the rest of the Lebanese people in the Israeli prisons. So if destroying the airport and if wiping out the villages and cities, and most importantly, if killing the children and the innocent civilians is not reason enough for us to fight back, and mark my words, I'm saying fight back and not take the country to war. If that is not reason enough, what is reason enough? Thank you. Thank you. I, I think we've covered this to a large extent, but can, we'll just have a brief this answer and we'll move on. This we don't want to repeat all okay. the questions. Simply, this is not the motion. You see, nobody is defending Israel's actions. Right, thank you. Lady in the third row. The motion, no. That, now, that was a rare moment of calm. Lady, motion, lady in the third row, please. The motion please. is biased from the very start. <laughs> You accepted to come on and speak of about course, the motion. Absolutely. You may say the motion is biased, the motion is provocative, I would call it. Woman in the front row, please. You. Um, Mr. Osama, you said that Hezbollah should not have the right to fight um, against Israel. So are you trying to say that Israel blood is worth of more value than Lebanese blood? Who are you asking the question? Um, Maybe. Uh, I did not say it does not have the right to fight against Israel. I said it does not have the right to drag Lebanon into a war. We had an ongoing national dialogue. We had an ongoing consensus over finding a reasonable and honorable defense strategy for Lebanon. And then suddenly this happened that has reshuffled the cards. Not suddenly, I'm sorry. They were told about it. You knew about sorry. July 12? Sorry? I didn't know about July 12th. You didn't. Of course, Sayyid Nasrullah is not going to consult but you, Osama. The Prime Lebanon Minister did not. <laughs> no, Sayyid Nasrullah is not going to come and consult exactly. you, Osama, for that. But he told no, Mr. Hadid. No, but I would, liked, I would have liked 1,500 families of the dead to have been told or been protected. The I would have liked 1 million Lebanese families of the dead, they were raising their hands and saying, it's all sacrifice for Lebanon, for Nasrullah. Everybody heard them saying that. <laughs> this is what they said. You want to come back and on maybe, and maybe, and maybe in that time you were in your office under your condition, writing something while they were under the debris and the rubble. They come saying we are victory. Okay, this is what they said. Okay, let him let him reply to that. This is what happened. Let him, re let him reply to that. Okay, of course. Of course. I was in Beirut, and my house is very close to the southern suburbs. And has no air conditioning. Could you and let him finish? <laughs> Thank you very much. And I was you being in, bombed. You weren't in the country. And you're right, Mona, I had no air conditioning because I had no electricity. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And I was but being bombed. you were bombed safe. And I was watching the planes. You were safe. Watching, watching the planes. planes. They were under the bombs of the planes. Could you let him speak? We were all safe for him. So were you. and let you speak. Thank you Absolutely. very much. There are some rules here. In February. I was, I was in safe. February. Thank you. I was safe. Will you let him speak? Luckily, I did. Thank you for three seconds, please. Luckily, some I, rules, finally. Luckily, I was safe. Dictator. So was my family, and so were you, Ibrahim. We did our part of the resistance. Yes, writing is part of the resistance, absolutely. But that doesn't mean that 1,500 people, all of them, wanted to die. That doesn't mean that 1 million people, all of them, wanted to be displaced. And that doesn't mean they did not have the right, at least, but to be told, to be warned, to be protected why on July 12th. Why are you talking 12? about all this dying and not dying? Given, Nobody knew that this given would be what you're saying, the, the, I don't the know. carnage that Israel would bring on bin Lebanon. <laughs> what are you talking you, about? You might, not, you might not want to interrupt your team member. You yeah. <laughs> might given, not do him that much good. <laughs> Osama, given what you're saying, I don't know what you were writing. Maybe you were writing about things that most of the Lebanese won't like to read. Okay, we have come to the point, ladies and gentlemen where we are going to vote on the motion. We are going to vote on the motion that this House believes that Hezbollah had no right to fight a war on Lebanon's behalf. Will you please take the voting machines? If you want to vote for, will you press button one, the yellow button? If you want to vote against, it's button two, the red button. And would you please do that now? You only have to press a button once and your vote will be recorded by the computers and sent to the screen. We should be getting the vote up now, on the screen. There it is, coming up. This is us. This is us. 
you can see the figures, 37.4 for the motion, 62.6 against. The motion has been resoundingly defeated. My thanks to our eminent speakers for making the journey here. Not that they did much listening to each other, but thank you anyway. Thank you very much to our audience. The Doha Debates will be back again next month. Until then, from all of us on the team, goodbye, good night, and thank you very much. <laughs>